Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday, June 4th, 2025 date, 1119 a.m. That's California time here. Uh, latest activity here in the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.6 across the Java Trench there in the green flag. Uh, taking a look at the last 24 hours here of earthquake activity around the planet. Got a pretty decent swarm out there around the Puerto Rico Trench and also across the Idaho area continuing up there. Also a little bit of movement off the Cascadia northern end with a three-pointer early this morning. So start up here in the Idaho area. I've been watching this swarm of activity here in the last oh, last couple weeks or so. Over 156 earthquakes around the, the uh, Stanley, Idaho area. This is the region that had a 6.5 earthquake here back in 2020. It is off of the Sawtooth Fault System, so this earthquake activity not occurring on the Sawtooth, although this area of the um, state of Idaho, this fault system, very capable of producing a uh, 7.5, and the last one was about 4,000 years ago, and then previous to that, 7,000 years ago. So maybe coming up on a time period here or where, we're, where we could be talking about some larger activity on that. Uh, a couple more earthquakes there overnight, and this morning, the latest one, a 3.5. Looks like about uh, 9 o'clock, close to 10 o'clock here my time. Uh, Yellowstone National Park over here got a little separate earthquake activity here. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up the Yellowstone overview. And some of those smaller quakes there that you're seeing on the map down here across the Warm River area. It says north and northeast of Warm River. This is actually in Wyoming, though, uh, for a couple smaller quakes with the largest magnitude of 1.5. That earthquake activity is showing up on, uh, looks like the Moose Creek, Idaho station here. A couple smaller quakes. A little uncertain on this area, though, if this is earthquake activity or if this is, uh, let me put that on mute, or if this is some type of wind event. It looks like very small microquakes, but hard to say. I'll have to watch that. Noth nothing's really showing up uh, on any other station as far as that little bunch of little spikes go. Those are normally what you would see during a uh, an intense earthquake swarm with a bunch of microquakes, but I don't see it on any nearby station, so it could be uh, some type of outside interference. Uh, either way, uh, locally there across Yellowstone, aside from a couple smaller quakes down south there, uh, outside the Warm River area, things look pretty quiet there across Yellowstone for now. Uh, a little bit of movement up in the Pacific Northwest as well. A couple smaller quakes around the area. Uh, nothing above 2.5 there for the Pacific Northwest. Same for Oregon. This one little inter interesting earthquake here, a little 2.3 uh, outside of Portland this morning. This is associated with the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, I know the locked area uh, sits offshore. The interface itself begins right here and extends underneath this area. Uh, this is 15 miles deep. Uh, that is associated with the Cascadia subduction zone up from the trimmer area. Um, there was no trimmer though yesterday. Looks like things have died off there uh, after a little extended period of trimmer activity. Nothing coming in yesterday. We'll see what today's look like. But um, a decent amount of slow slip events there across the Cascadia subduction zone in the last month. Over 11,000 being recorded. And now we've come to a halt and uh, definitely keep an eye on things here. Northern California, pretty quiet. Nothing showing up there across the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. The Bay Area, awfully quiet as well. If you look at the 2.5 map and above, well, that pretty much removes all of the earthquakes there across the west coast. Even the microquake activity here, little slim pickings. Got the uh, typical zones moving around the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, also the Garlock Fault shear zone down here. Uh, seen some small microquake activity, but nothing, uh, nothing big happening for now. No elevated activity. Uh, Texas oil fields out here still getting hit with a bunch of earthquakes. Nothing new. Uh, one earthquake up there in Kansas from yesterday. A little 2.3. Also, New Madrid Seismic Zone had a little small quake uh, this morning, a 1.7. I was just looking at the uh, the readings out there, the seismograph stations in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. It looks like that was the uh, just the only earthquake out there listed. I know this only goes back the last couple hours or so, if that, uh, but I don't see any type of unusual activity. No notable uh, earthquake movement, just that one little small earthquake. 
uh, near Dyersburg, Tennessee. Had someone asking about that there this morning, so not a whole lot going on there. Uh, Puerto Rico Trench down here, definitely active. Got a decent swarm. Well, actually, off the Puerto Rico Trench is going to be around the Puerto Rico mainland, around the Mariotos Trough. Now, let me show you guys the oceanic crust view. There's a couple different subduction zones here with the uh, Caribbean plate being squeezed, so to speak. Caribbean plate being this very, well, not super small, but it's small compared to the North American and the South American plate here. Uh, the general view of the Caribbean plate. They're in the pink salmon color. I guess it's kind of pinkish on my end. Uh, that's getting pushed around, shoved around, and subducted and lifted by the uh, South America plate here moving up. And uh, the rest of the dynamics here to the north. That puts a, tr a strain up here on the Mariotos Trough and the Puerto Rico Trench region. That's where we're seeing a swarm of activity here today. About uh, six miles underneath this area of the Mariotos Trough, this region can get some big earthquakes. Um, really big ones. Got a decent swarm going on there across that area today. 22 earthquakes of various magnitudes, twos and threes. Um, so we'll continue to watch that. Normally elevated activity like that, like that could be pointing towards a sign of something bigger happening out there. And that's around the uh, Puerto Rico area. Uh, so for the largest earthquake here in the last 24 hours, that goes to a 5.2 around Indonesia. So far today, a five-pointer in the Solomon Islands area, about 35 miles deep underneath that region. Let's see what else we have here across the area. 3.2 coming into the Alaska area right now. Look at this movement just south here of the Nankai Trough, getting a little swarming going on there. A couple of earthquakes in the full range. Watch that subduction zone. Eventually, it's going to pop. It's um, under quite a bit of strain here. Let's see Nankai Trough. Uh, a lot of activity around the Philippines area, southward into the Java Trench, Indonesia area. That's just very common on any given day. It's an area of daily seismic activity. There's our latest larger quake, 5 point around the Solomon Islands area. New Zealand, a couple quakes there from yesterday. There's that 4.6 just off the Alpine Fault. A little bit of activity further up north. Hit and miss, but uh, eventually it's going to hit that uh, area of the Alpine Fault. that has not had any um, large release and pressure in quite a long time. That's uh, The Alpine Fault has a lot of, um, a lot of potential for some damage. Uh, super deep quake underneath North Island there that may be associated with the Hikarangi or potentially the maybe southern end there of the Kermadec Trench. Nothing big going on there across New Zealand for now, but it is an area to watch closely. The Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet. A couple, eh, maybe a little swarm going on out here in the uh, Atlantic or about that triple point boundary. Some twos stirring up out there. Nothing showing up on the uh, USGS map though. Mediterranean, a little bit more quiet out here today compared to the last couple days. Just twos and threes around the general area. And uh, let's see what we got going on here for Hawaii. Got to be getting close here to a, a volcanic eruption. Uh, let's see, this update was put out a couple days ago here on the 2nd. Looking for episode 24. Uh, it will likely start within about three days or so. This was two days ago now. So let's check out the uh, deformation data. Still going up. This is the electronic tilt meter at the Kilauea Volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii. Actually, we're surpassed the previous level scene um, where we had those spectacular fountainings going up to 1,200 feet in the air. That may be similar this time around again. We're getting close. In fact, this one here... Uh, Covers quite a few of the last previous episodes there, far as the highest inflation level goes. So watch that. Maybe talking about some uh, beautiful fountaining going on there from those uh, two vents. Hold on a second here. Check out the webcam. See what they look like right now. Summit area. Quite a few. Uh, you know, there's a lot of volcanic gas. It's just very typical there. Nothing new, nothing out of the ordinary. 
uh, but it should happen very soon here and uh, man I what I wouldn't give just to go out there and see that firsthand that would be pretty awesome 1200 foot lava fountain that would be spectacular so watch for that that could happen at any given moment any given day here we're uh, like I said we're past the level seen as uh, far as the inflation goes uh, space weather activities check this out here real quick see if there's anything new going on that kind of looks like a face out here we got a couple different coronal holes here 55 52 and 54 making a little I don't know really not a happy face <laughs> that looks more like a uh, uncertainty a little uncertain in that uh, facial demeanor there but those are coronal holes uh, really not pointing at us directly as far as the Earth's Sun plane goes we may get a little bit of enhancement uh, here once these move move on uh, from a couple different ones but I'm not really not expecting much there for a solar weather uptick things have died down following that CME activity no more proton events um, look at the flare level pretty low got uh, back down into the B flare category that's <laughs> That is uh, quite low. So flare threat has dropped uh, about 10% chance. M flare at 55. C flare around 99% chance or so. But uh, remember this sunspot over here. It's got a name now. 4105. Uh, just came around the eastern limb. That was thrown off a uh, decent flare here recently. Uh, still a little bit of complexity there within that sunspot core. Uh, there's a massive area that produced that large M flare and subsequent CME or directed CME recently that's uh, still just kind of floating off there towards the western limb a little bit of complexity remains within that we'll still see maybe a, a chance for some C flare activity maybe an M flare uh, but I'm kind of watching this one here I want to see what this one does over the coming days as it uh, continues its track there more into an earth directed uh, earth directed perspective so we've got 10% chance for X flare, M flare at 55. Um, not for sure what's going on with this here. I don't think we're going to see anything kicking up tonight. But maybe uh, these guys, maybe they're looking at some um, residual CME activity, but I don't see it out there. I don't think it's going to kick up. Uh, let's go over here and check out the asteroids here real quick before we get into weather. I want to see if there's anything major going on. Uh, there's that one coming somewhat close today. 2025 LB, newly discovered 49-foot house size asteroid. Uh, coming in within about 94,000 miles of the planet. That's pretty close. Well within the Earth moon distance on average which is about 239,000 so nothing I like like say it's a it's a uh, it's a distance for sure not anything to worry about though uh, storm prediction center man a lot of flooding up around Kansas Wichita Augusta El Dorado area of Kansas seen a lot of a uh, lot of flooding going on looks like some more rain for that area over the next couple days uh, mainly parked over Oklahoma though these guys in Oklahoma are getting just slammed with a lot of rain uh, tornado threat today across eastern New Mexico a little bit up here as well across um, looks like Illinois region portions of Missouri uh, some wind and some hail threats out there today as well a little bit different day tomorrow more enhanced not enhanced but more of a broader area uh, for some tornado activity with a 5% chance returning here across the uh, panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, and stretching into Kansas as well. Wind and some big time hail threats tomorrow as well. So, I, just a lot of rain happening out there, and there's more coming. So, uh, I can only do so much with the flood water, right? Let me see what we got here for the drought. I don't think they have any drought conditions out there right now. That's probably been completely wiped off. Let's see what we got for drought monitoring. Yeah, look at that. Huge improvement. Uh, a couple months ago, these guys were looking at 
uh, a lot of drought conditions that has since gone away. Uh, California is starting to seep back in here uh, with drought. Unfortunately, we don't have any rain in the forecast. It's not our wet season out here. Southern California got a little bit of rain last night and uh, yesterday seen. Uh, but West Coast here kicking in uh, a little bit of drought conditions. Moisture anomaly. There's some of that rain showing up there across Southern California. That may help offset the fire season just a little bit, but it's not going to put it off. It's not going to put it off completely. It's just kind of tam uh, tapering down the conditions out there. But uh, yeah, quite a bit of rain out there in the Oklahoma, Kansas area. Let's see what we got here for the uh, next couple days or so. I'm sure these guys are getting some more uh, some more rainfall. Rain accumulation map out here. We'll take this and run it all the way to the 18th. And uh, yeah, look at that. Wow, these guys are just already soaked with um, you know months of rainfall, but they're going to get quite a bit more out here, it looks like. That's the ECMWF model, GFS model, a little bit lighter. But uh, either way, it's going to stay wet. And uh, I'm sure nice and green out there this time of year. Not so much for the West Coast, Pacific Northwest as well. Looks pretty quiet. As uh, far as that hurricane, let's go check that out real quick, see what we got. It's supposed to be entering into the Gulf around the 18th of this month. Let's see if anything has changed here. And it has. Look at that. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So even this, though, it's a ways out, showing a lot different uh, modeling compared to what we had seen a couple days ago. Remember the there was some type of tropical development here in the Gulf, hitting the Louisiana and, and Texas area. That has since changed, and it looks like now taking more of a northerly track towards Florida. But that's a ways out, folks. So really can't uh, really can't uh, look at this with certainty and unless you're within a couple days maybe a few days time period then you can get a uh, certain path potential certain path of where that hurricane may be headed uh, but I really don't see anything um, of noteworthy value right now but we'll continue to watch that as we are uh, heating up the ocean out there getting uh, towards uh, hurricane season Seismograph stations out there, pretty quiet, folks. Not a whole lot going on out there today. We'll continue to watch things. Keep an eye on the West Coast. Keep an eye on, you know, Idaho. A lot going on up here across uh, that area. Uh, we got one earthquake right now in the Bay Area on the Hayward Fault, little 1.5. Just one earthquake right now, but uh, this is another fault system that's been locked and loaded for a little while a little bit of swarming going on here across the northern end and uh, towards the central portion here lately as well where that one pointer just struck but uh, this one's definitely overdue for some big earthquake activity could happen at any given moment here <clears throat> all right folks have a good one i'm out of here stay safe and we'll see you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening for the wednesday night update enjoy your afternoon.